Welcome to the round 13 review for Supercoach 2023. It's George from Fantasy Take TV. Uh, 2000, I scored 2,164, rank just inside top 2K. Went up a little bit, so uh, that's okay. Um, would love to be a much higher rank, but hopefully next year. We'll see how we go, but uh, I don't know what the goal is this year. Just whatever happens, happens. A um, few things to like consider, like how many, like which cheap premium do you go for your cover player? Do you go a few of them and skimp sort of on your, your F6 or something like that and you get like two or three cover players you know you split that you know we were going say a 600k player in that slot do you just get two or three you know like keys or Taron thomas or fife or whatever maybe a bit late for some of them but interesting to see how people play this himmelberg i went this week so um yeah see how people go with that a uh, lot to discuss on the pod coming up probably tomorrow um but yeah, i'm a little under the weather again i think i was last week too i had a glass a few glasses of wine and like I felt fine I went to work and everything but just felt like a little bit fluey like just above the shoulders basically and then I had another glass of wine the other day and the same things happened now I'm a bit like a bit stuffy everywhere so I don't know I don't know if it, I think it's allergies maybe but I don't know just feel feel okay but just um I have to keep like snorting a little bit if that makes sense or whatever that thing is uh clean I uh, suck in your nose whatever anyway uh, moving on um yeah go check out the team so um this week was yeah everyone sort of just very much a whatever week everyone scored probably the most similar across the board for the year um a few people had, you know if you scored 100 points above you know sorry saga 2164 scored 100 points above that that's like huge this week but it's pretty hard to make significant ground um uh, across this by this round, but I think the the movement will be a lot. You know, the next two rounds will be pretty significant. I think depending on how pe- how people go and you know what rookies people have to fill in their you know their dud you know their eighteenth and seventeenth sort of slots. So uh, that will be interesting. Uh, Sicily suspension is disappointing. Um, considering we just sat through this, uh, I moved uh, a few things around just to fill eighteen in round. Um, in round twelve, and now it's like, oh my god, they got to do. I have to sit through another donut in round fifteen. I think I will. I think I'll hold Sicily because you just not. I can't. There's no chance. If I trade him, there's no return. Like absolutely no chance I get him back. And you know he'd probably be pushing. Yeah, he'd be pushing seven hundred k. No, maybe it's maybe like six seventy, six eighty if he actually played. Um, instead of getting suspended the other week, so uh, I'll be holding, and I'd love. I mean, feel like there's a bit of a dilemma where I could probably go. Should I just pick a proper M8, or should I just pick all of Taron Thomas keys and and a rookie or something? Or go, you know, keys and Taron Thomas, or a rookie and like a Sarong. Um, plus, I'll have Humphrey here as well, so it's probably better to go the 600k mid. But I think if shit hits the fan, it might be better to have that extra premium on the bet well, not premium extra mid price on the bench i think Taron thomas is a discussion in itself probably touch on that on the podcast but I'm kind of not sure what direction you go i think uh, himmelberg has a low break even and i think he's one that will be very popular post buy my only issue with himmelberg is they got ash back there they got isaac coming they got whitford back there who seems settled um and they moved key forward but they played Himmelberg down back, but Himmelberg wasn't playing key position. So with Sam Taylor and Isaac coming back into the side, I think something will happen to Jack Buckley or Nick Haynes. And Haynes is on like ultra, ultra mega contract. So I don't know if they're going to drop him or not. And he's been in good form. So do they drop Buckley? Cause, or do they move some of these flankers up the ground? Even Perryman's playing a fair bit back, back there. So uh, interesting to see how that plays out. Because he's not a key position player. He's not sorry. He's not a key position defender. He's a. They said he's a flanker, and that he was playing on. I think he was on Paul Curtis for a bit. Taron Thomas. So. Um, yeah, he can score super well in this role. I think there were periods like third, third and fourth quarter. The. Um, the entries dried up from north. Um, so it was played. I think it was third quarter was 20 inside 50s to five or something like that so it was not much ball for the Giants defenders that quarter which uh, helped uh, hurt them a little bit so 
regardless for his price, perfect cover player, you know, decent, cheap option, high ceiling, could score in line with some of the top liners, not the absolute top top, but um, or maybe if he had the defence to himself, he could, but with all this sharing, I think he can do a good enough job. So I was happy enough with him. And then our trades were, um, traded out both North boys, who we lost points on that. We brought in Neil and Hilmerberg, plus we got a bit of money from that as well. About 30k from that deal, plus the extra body in the last buy round. So I don't know if that was the right move. I figure the talk on Shiza was there saying they're like managing him during the week and whatnot, and um, I think they're just yeah settling him down back a bit more. But I think post buy after he gets a rest, I think they probably want him more up the ground. I think he's looked much better there. Um, you know, like midfield half forward sort of role, but I'm not too sure. So I think he he'll be fine to hold. He's not a top liner, but he can he won't do a terrible job for you. So if you have Shiza, I think yeah, I think you're okay, but. I think given the high, Neil had a low break even, Sheasel had a high break even. I was either keeping Humphrey or Sheasel, plus Humphrey, I get the extra score in the last buy round. And yeah, more money from selling Sheasel. So I figured I'll keep Humphrey over Sheasel. Mid DPPs, probably a little bit more convenient as well. So it'll be interesting to see how Humphrey goes because I don't think he's sort of scoring sustainable, but you know, Sheasel's might be a little bit more, but his role is a bit of it, not too sure what it is going forward. So. Yeah, just chosen to keep Humphrey as my 23rd player, all going well, over Sheasel, so, um, yeah. Um, did we touch on Sicily suspension? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, Sicily suspension would suck, so fingers crossed he gets off. Not much more to say on that. Take us very good, great goal at the end. Oh yeah, captains Dawson into Brayshaw. I think we got a bit full of ourselves here. We kind of nailing captains for the past probably six weeks done really well got a few massive ones like a Sicily and a Rowan um, amongst a few other good ones but this week not so great needed to be on a Laird I was never considering Laird just because you know had the calf strapping on a bit managed during the week um, I figure if they're up by a lot maybe they sub him off uh, probably over th overthought it, I think so um, yeah the bad call uh, Dawson to win by 120 points and Dawson score 95 I can barely fathom how that has happened and I would have straight captained him if I VC'd English but I got Brayshaw so whatever Brayshaw did nothing in the fourth quarter so that's fine uh, I'll probably be quick with this video as I just a bit blocked at the moment um, yeah Sinclair very good it's a bit up and down like one week you hate him in your team the next week you're happy so I think it'll all even out towards the end. So, yeah, it's good to see him come good because we did pay 540 for him and it looked like he was heading to sub 500. Now, I missed the Hawthorne game, which was annoying because apparently Connor McDonald played one of like the best game of his career and like almost best on ground, if not best on. So, hopefully Connor McDonald... I probably need to trade Warpool and then play Connor McDonald in Warpool's role next year, but... They seem to be happy to develop him at half forward and maybe even keep him there. I don't know, but I think he's he'll be a midfielder eventually, fingers crossed. But all hope anyway. So, but yeah, Will Day didn't see it, but 109 next to his name is pretty nice. After it's been a rough five weeks, six weeks of owning him, but we got him cheap and it enabled us to make some upgrades. So that's fine. Uh, Weddle 68. I think we have to trade this week because we've kind of stuffed up our structure. Uh, looking at the um. Midfield, uh, Bont 125. Looks like he's carrying that knee knock, that knee niggle. It's probably going to lose him the brown low, I think. So that's annoying. Laird 156, unreal. Uh, Merritt, no suspension. Fine. Brayshaw, very good. Brayshaw's been a great. We traded him three weeks ago, and he's averaged 122 for us. And he was 530k, 540k. So one of our better trade ins. And I actually think our best trade in of the year was going Josh Weddle over Harry Sharp. Now, this was the week where I went Atkins the week before, but Weddle was 160k, and Sharp was 123k. Brought in Weddle, and we actually filled Weddle for... Fielded Weddle a few times, got some good rookie scores, and, um, yeah, Sharp would have been dead, and, yeah, we used we needed Weddle in the first buy round as well, so... Yeah, going Weddle over Sharp, that's gotten us way more money and points on field, and it's enabling us to actually get, like, a decent... Finishing team, although we might run out of trades. So 
I was yeah very happy with that because I think sixty three percent of people brought in sharp that week, and I think only three percent brought in Weddle for one sixty k. So I was very happy with that. So um, take the wins when you get them. Hasn't would have been nice to have a few more wins this year, but it's whatever. Tom Green or oh, Neil was fine. Didn't see, but yeah, Green seventy seven. In the back of my mind, I just kind of he's only down to one hundred five average now. He's had a lot of bad ratios like DT to SC, so hopefully that sorts itself out and he's not slowing down from like he did last year. So we'll see how he goes. Uh, Steel 85, so disappointing. Uh, really not much to say on Steel. I do wonder if you no know, shoulder strapping this week. I think it's the knee that's bothering him. He had it all taped up. Um, so I don't actually know. Like... I don't know if this was just a bad pick or is it just we traded him traded him in, hurt his knee, and he's just been bad because of the knee and he's playing through it. You just kind of hope he comes good at some point. So um, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with him. Um, he played really good in the third quarter and then after that did nothing or in between that did not a lot. Uh, Matthew Johnson looked very good and he's going to make money that's going to be important for us to finish the team so I think we've just scraped enough money to finish the team so it's kind of all worked out but it would have been nice to you know have a bit more like have Chandler early and a bit more trades so that we could actually make some moves to like get some better bench picks so I think it'll be important with all the suspensions going on English Marshall I think I can't believe that Briggs is like outscoring English at times I think last week English was good but I think that was it. What's that? Two out of three weeks he's gone above English. I'm not sure. At least this week he has. So if you have like a Gorn or like someone else here, I think you're like keeping. I think you're keeping Briggs over Gorn. Um, this year more rock time looks really good. He'd be hungry to be waiting for his opportunity for ages. So yeah, it looks really good. And then the forward line, uh, which is fine. Gordon dropped off, so it's you know, not a bad week for him to score 62. Himmelberg, 88. I think it's all right. I just I do slightly worry about the amount of points to go around, but he's on kick-ins. He dropped a few intercepts. Um, he'll be fine. So uh, I'd want like 100 plus, but if I get like 90 plus, that's, that's okay. Hopefully not less than that, but yeah, he, he'll be a great get for... This week is a little, a little hard to bring him in, but uh, after his buy, it might be 400k though, but perfect cheap d6 f6 or cover player so that's all right eddie ford score didn't end up counting but uh that's okay he's making a lot of money that we need so 240k now eight break even we need him to score well i think we're going to hold him post buy and we might do our final upgrade in like round 17 or something so depending on mj and ford how much money they both make that'll whatever those two add up to that'll be our final upgrade and we'll get Humph back. So we'll set up for the buys now. I probably should have done this before, but uh, we'll just go, let's say, Dacos and Sicily on the bench. Led on, uh, I suppose we'll just leave this there because they're not playing. Uh, both rocks are playing, and then we have a full uh, forward line. But the problem is we're kind of stuck. We can't really get... Um, We can't get Humphrey or in the midfield sort of like we got um Ford like we can't field Ford basically and we can't even loop either because Roberts plays early. We can loop Rosie and what's the point of that? So the only way we can make this happen, so we can trade Reddle Weddle to marriage. So that means we get a donut on the bench. Um uh marriage. So we get a donut on the bench, but it doesn't really matter because we can't actually field anyone here regardless. Um, I thought Marriage looked all right. Kicked, I think, two goals. I think the Sydney forward Buller should be a much better scorer based on VFL. Four years older than him, so... Assuming he comes in, though, but I think Marriage like, has... like There's no way... You would think there's no way he gets dropped for his Buller if they get a few players back, like Logan McDonald or something in a few weeks. Uh, maybe... Um, Logan gets maybe Buller gets dropped or something I don't know I'm just trying to think ahead so that would leave the team at 
We won't count Mullen, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 without Mullen, so 19 with Mullen. And if we get, like, injuries during the week or whatever, we're just going to cop it. Like, five trades left, that's no good. And then, yeah, we need to do two upgrades, but we'll definitely grab Darcy Cameron. Uh, bit of a sour taste in the mouth trading him in, but rock time's good just because we brought him in. Off, like, I hate bringing in players early off limited preseason. I think last year I did it with Hull, injured straight away. Brought in Darcy Cameron off limited preseason, injured straight away. I don't know. Um, but at least, like, we're going to need the rock cover, I think, at some point, most likely. So he'll come in. Um, if Sisley suspended, we're holding. It's, I know we'll lose points but we're just low on trades and he'll be a great pod um for the last eight weeks or so however long he he's in the team but and we'll just use Humphrey on field instead so um fingers crossed he gets suspended so I think we'll be okay hopefully Chincotta plays I assume he will uh, fingers crossed and then this buy round will be um just put players on field again so I won't count Mullen at the moment uh, I think Chester will play, so I guess we can count him. Why not? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, that's 18 there. And then Chincotta will become Darcy Cameron. So we we'll, should field 19. Maybe we can DPP with Mullen. Field 20 if he plays, but not getting my hopes up. So uh, I think we're fine for the buys. And then, yeah, that'll be... Chincotta will be Darcy Cameron. We'll have 70k in the bank, I think. What's... Chinconda's break even. 26. If he can just make... If he can score 60, that would be great. Hopefully he does play. Uh, I know they've got a few defenders in the VFL, but I think he did all right. And then we can turn Ford and MJ into two players. In, sorry, into one player, but... Yeah, I'd love to get Keys. I was looking at this before, like Ben Keys' CBAs. Uh, 55. The... Drop came from Sloan, and they gave a little bit more to uh, Pedler, Saliga, Rochelle. Not much to Rochelle, but I think that will, I think that'll be the mix. I think yeah, Sloan's will be faced out of the midfield. Hopefully, play more wing because I think he's better on the outside at this point in, in his career. Um, and then a uh, bit more time for yeah. I think yes, Keys would pr probably be like 40 50 percent for the rest of the year. Maybe a little bit even lower if they want to give more to Saliga and, and whatnot. But yeah, really wish I went Weddle to um, Weddle to Keys last week, but chickened out a little bit. Just wasn't quite sure. Wanted a bit more info from the club about what sort of mid-time he would have going forward. Would have been nice, but couldn't get it. Um, but yeah, that's that's it, I think. That's the team. Uh, hopefully the, hopefully you, go, you guys go well over the next few weeks. But yeah, I'd love to get Keys, even like Taron Thomas. Taron Thomas, we can't really make that happen. I'll speak about him on the pod, I guess, but kicked a few goals, for, obviously, for the score, but I think his mid-time was pretty good. Let's have a quick look. 62. Oh, that's higher than I thought, because I did see him deep forward a little bit. Um, so they, I think Shields probably comes out of the CBAs for uh, LDU. Greenwood probably comes in for a little bit. Uh, I think Greenwood won't be super high. And then there's LDU, Greenwood, and Simkin. And Simkin, okay, he was getting massive CBAs. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what the balance is. Maybe Phillips has drops a little bit. Maybe um, Thomas drops a little bit because he can play forward. And I think maybe they'll take Shields out. Even though he's actually been all right, just they need to play the kids. So see how that goes. Maybe Sheasel gets a little bit too. So, I mean, the buy sucks, but I think he's a great play for a a cheap buy, a cheap player on your bench, but I can't really make it happen. So I don't know. I feel like I wish I had more trades just to, I say that every year at this time of the year, I wish I had more trades to make some cheap plays, but we we made one play in Himmelberg. So just stick with that. And Keys has gone up in price already. So, um, but you sort of like, instead of going, uh, two premium, like one premium between Ford and Johnson, I could almost go like a, um, 
like a Keys and a Thomas, but I don't think it's like even possible because they'll go up in price by the time we can actually do that. So um, yeah, that's it from me, I think. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.